Good evening, everyone. Hi, I'm Peter Machen, and um, I'm talking to um, Agnes Lisa Wagner, director of King Bouncer and his daughter tonight. We're also very lucky to have King Bouncer and his daughter Katerina, Katerina Bouncer with us tonight. Um, I hope I got the surname right, because I'm doing the English S, not the German Z, but uh, uh, King Banza, um, I think is more correct, and Katerina Banza. Um, welcome to Encounters, everybody. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, um, Agnes, let's begin with you. Um, can you just tell me a little bit about the genesis of the film? Um, how did it come to be made? Um, did you already know the like the buzz? Um, yeah, yeah. Can you just go from there? Sure. Um, I happened to, I knew of King Banza. Uh, people in Mannheim talk about him. I live in, in the city of Mannheim in Germany and King Banza and his daughter Katharina, they both li live in Ludwigshafen, which is five minutes from here, just across the Rhine River. Uh, and people talk about him. So I knew there's a king living very close by. And I, moving to Mannheim, I, I had heard about uh, just the fact that he is there but never met him. And then Katarina was actually the first of the two that I met. She moved uh, into my office space. I had this office for uh, freelance creative people and Katarina joined us for a little while and we got along really well and had many very interesting conversations. And yeah, so after, after a while uh, we met again uh, after she had moved, moved out of the office. And during one of our conversations, I asked her, I, you know, I thought uh, it came to me very spontaneously, the thought that this family could actually be a film. And I asked her during breakfast at a little cafe and she was also very spontaneous and said, yes, I actually could imagine doing that. And then I think a few weeks later, she took me to her parents' place and I met the king. Okay. The um, king, the, yeah. The king. Um, king Bansa, um, can you tell me just a little bit about how you felt, with, like, what, what did you think when the idea of the film was first suggested? Like, how did you respond? Yeah, I have done a lot of films here in Germany. The median, like, uh, they like my attitude. They like how I work. I'm, I'm a hard worker. You know, I'm a, a double uh, engineering, engineering of agriculture machine and, and engineering of cars. So the German, they, they appreciate how I work hard. I train Germans since, uh, since last year, I trained 14 Germans in my, in, in my garage. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Agnes come and tell me the story. And I said, oh, if you like, we can do it. Uh, if you like, we can do it, no problem. So a uh, lot of people, anytime people come to me, every film we does, anytime I have, I have a lot of uh, lucky and anytime I have a first prize. Yeah, I don't boast myself. Yeah. No, I don't boss myself. I'm a man. Yeah, if I want to do something, I do it on the right way. Yeah. So the Agnes come to me and my daughter, then we talk about it. Then we go to Ghana. From Ghana, we go to Togo. Togo is our Ewe, uh, rear Ewe land, uh, the spiritual, spiritual land, Juju. Yeah. Because we, our, our, our religion is spiritual, juju, voodoo. Yeah, yeah. We call it voodoo. Yeah, this is our spiritual. Yeah, that's why before we, before we do everything, we, we, must, we must talk to the, to the, to the, to the spiritual. So uh, that, that was uh, everything. Now everything was. I think we, uh, we, we all we satisfied about what we have done. Thank you very much. Um, 
so you were you were talking you're talking about um, you know voodoo juju and and the spirit world and Katarina in the film you talked about um, how important it was for you to connect with, with you, you know with that part of your culture and your history and, and presumably yourself and your and your soul um, can you just talk talk a little bit about the experience of connecting that with, you know connecting with that thing that is very different from your your your, your German upbringing but clearly important. You, uh, you, you mean the Katarina or you Sorry, mean Katarina, me? yes, yes, yes. How Katarina re 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 relates to voodoo and juju. Um, it's something uh, I've been growing up with because of my father. I'm growing up with the voodoo uh, spirit because I've been growing up with a man from Ghana. He's my father. And every time we went to Ghana, it was an important part to celebrate this spiritual and really natural um, belief. I prefer to call it, I can, it's difficult for me to call it a religion because for me, a religion is more uh, stuff that's written in books and have a lot of rules and the voodoo is just have the normal rules by nature. And if you don't follow the rules by nature, you will get punished by nature or the people around you. It's just some really simple um, um, rules and you celebrate and connect with the nature and celebrate this in different uh, events and singing, da dancing, telling stories, um, this is all part of um, celebrating the voodoo and it's a lot of about love and about love to the nature and not just about puppets and put <laughs> stuff into puppets. Um, yeah. It's a much bigger and much, it's really fulfilling and really blissful. Um, and it's, it's also a bit romantic. It's hard. It's not everything nice, like in our churches, everything is gold <laughs> and clean and this, you really, you are with the dirt, you are with the fire, with the water, everything, the sweat, the, um, yes. And you're dancing and everything of this is voodoo. And uh, it's, it can be really big when you're celebrating this. Yeah. And it's a, yeah, it's yeah. a great spiritual, way to connect with uh, the nature yeah the everything yeah, where we are coming from yeah <laughs> so. so so can i ask you i mean the, the, this question that i'm going to ask we, we, we could talk a very long time but just for now i just want to like talk about the, both, both you and your father i'd like you both to answer like the physical experience and the emotional experience of being in ghana you know which is it seems to me a very different reality to Germany. You know, I, I'm from South Africa and I also live in Berlin. And, you know, it is in some way a different world. So beyond the questions of, of race and identity, just like the experience of being there, like how different is that for you? Yeah, we live in, I, I live here in, in Germany. That we are, we are Christians here. We are Christians. Yeah. And, uh, First of all, my, my nature is a Bodu nature. And uh, uh, here in Germany, we call it Bremen is the town. They call it Bremen. Who yeah. brought Christ Christianism in Ghana to come and, come and say that here is Christentum and here, but still we don't, we don't do only, uh, we don't go to church only. Before we do something, we call our spirit spiritual. We call our spirit first. Then we talk to the spirit. And uh, I'll be very happy if you can come to me. If, you, if, if we can go to Togo once, then you see how our spiritual is very, very powerful and respectful. Yes. I will be very happy, cool. and it can, it, you can see in the film, my my doctor, 
He put his hand on the wall. He's moving on the wall. You see, ask my daughter, have spiritual, have having in, in body, a spirit walk in a body. Yeah, like, a, like, like a electricity. Yes. Ask her, she can tell you after she touched this wall. <laughs> Tell us, Katerina. I can't tell about this spiritual <laughs> moment. <laughs> it's, yeah, for sure. It's um, uh, the climate is for sure a thing. What's completely different from Germany to Ghana? The nature in Ghana is much more powerful. Um, the sun, you are directly at the equator. It's don't have a chance um, to escape the sun. She's really strong and, but you see it also in the plants and what the people plant there and eat there and everything. Um, for sure you have racism in uh, Europe, a lot of racism, different types of racism. I've grown up with it. In our city, we had a lot of racism uh, and I still have it for sure, and um, times don't get easier. It's, the voice is getting louder, but the times don't get easier because we have so much a chance to talk about all the differences, we, or different worlds we were living in the last years and how I was growing up as a non-white woman and then talk to a white woman in Germany and for her it's the first uh, conversation in 30, five years about this kind of topic. But for me, it's part of my life since yeah. uh, I discovered that people see me different. Um, uh, yeah, and for sure you have, you have the, your, your parts to, to carry when you are not white. <laughs> and yeah. uh, when you are not, and also it's a different thing when I'm in Ghana, I'm also not black. And somehow you need to find a way to, to, to have peace with this both worlds. Yeah. And well, you do in the film, you, you say that in Ghana, you say it's not a discrepancy is the word you use, whereas in Germany, it's a discrepancy. Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, can, can I ask you, is that, is that because of the nature of Ghanaian society, or is that also part of a kind of global kind of racism that, like, the light of your skin, the, like, the, the more easily you accept it? Yes, and it's also, um, when you ask the people there, the Europeans are always welcome, always the nice people, and what's uh, interesting part for me was when I asked the people about the history, they started with the European history, what happened in Africa. They, could, they didn't start at, with their African history to describe who immigrated there and who was fighting who and what was the problem or whatever, why was the land there. You know how just history is happening and the, the Ghanaian people um, just was just the history from the European, the Europeans came here, then and then, and then this, this happened. And then I got home to Germany and then I wanted uh, to know also by myself um, more about the West African history. And this is really a problem um, that the Africans don't know their own history. And the history is so interesting. There's so much development happened in Africa. Um, before the Europeans came, while the Europeans came, uh, while it already was there. Um, yes, and this is something what I think it's good to know for your self-worth and uh, to know your, your history, where you're coming from and not just from the, the colonizers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'd, I'd really like to. We, I, I'm just gonna. I just put this out there. We don't have the time to fully explore it. But just like this notion of non-white or even people of color, where it's always against this kind of you know standard or whatever of whiteness, and we just seem we don't even have the linguistic ability to move around it because it's so there in the world. Sorry. Yes, it's uh, it's really there, but 
I think the new generation who's growing up in Africa, they develop a different kind of uh, self worth and expression and start, if you don't know the history, what happened exactly, you start to write a strong history by yourself. And I think that what is happening now, if it's in, uh, in news, in culture, in, in, in really strong fashion, it's interesting how they uh, are uh, uh, developing in the whole world with their talent. And uh, in different kind of parts and also start to discover their history, their old history. And what was it about, about the hair? Why was the hair like this? Why was the lips, you know, this big uh, teller, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why it was like this? And um, it was because of the uh, slavery, because they wanted that their women are not so beautiful. So, so this, the slave, uh, the, the, the people who came to talk to slaves, the women don't get picked because they had this kind of yeah. Wow, I never. It knew was. That. It was. They just told them it's a tradition. It's a tradition. No, it's not a tradition. <laughs> that's, that's <a> <laughs> it's it's because of the slavery because they didn't pick the woman who had this kind of lips. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's um yeah, and it's out there because but now because of the internet and everything, we have the chance to discover it and uh, live and celebrate it. Yeah. All together, the Europeans and the Africans. It's, yeah. We belong together. It's, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I actually like mentioned in the, in the other Q&A I, I did the other day, is you know, the narratives of Africa and Europe and the West are, are inseparable. They're part of the same story. You can't, you know, you can't pull them apart and put one here and one there. Um, so like some Q&A, the q and is from the audience are mounting up, but there's something like, um, I want to talk about the end of the film, and for me, it's one of it's it's kind of like one of the most important moments in the film is um, when there's this tension between you and your dad, Mr. Banza, um, and already about your different experience of being black in Germany and in the world and being you know from different generations. Uh, and key is you know this notion of adapting versus retelling the story, you know, repainting the image of people. Uh, that repainting the image of people of yourself in people's heads, I think is how you expressed it. So I, if you can both talk about this, please, I'd, I'd be really like interested. This is our downfall in Black Africa because everybody have a religion. Only everybody have a religion. Only we Black, we have a problem with our religion. That is our downfall with the Black African because everybody come and bring a religion. The Christianists bring a religion, the Muslims bring a religion, uh, Jehovah, everybody come and come and, and come and do what he like in black Africa. Yeah, uh, our children, most of our children now, they don't know what, what is voodoo, a spiritual voodoo. They don't know what place they come from. Yeah, if you are a black man, you don't know what is voodoo, what your religion, you lost, you are not. A, yes, that's I want to tell the blacks today. Yeah, our religion is voodoo, we blacks, not all the white, white religion, this bring this, this bring this, this bring this every day, then we, uh, that, 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 this bring all confusion in Africa. Yeah. Nobody leaves us alone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that is the big problem we have in Africa. Yeah. But we we live all the world in peace. We are the peaceful person. We black. We are the peaceful, peaceful person in this world. Yeah, I know. I stay in Germany. Since 1970, <laughs> I'm in Germany. We black. We are the peaceful person in this world. Yeah. yeah. And King Banzer, can I ask you about your experience of being black in Germany compared, compared to Katarina's also, you know, specifically? The black. Of your, your experience of being black in, in Germany. Um, and uh, I, my, I never thought that. My, my experience in Germany is so, is so nice, is so beautiful. The Germans, the German, they are so good. The German, they are so hard, they are so kind. Oh, the Germans, well, 
first time the first time they watch you yeah if they see that you are good everything you need they will give you they will help you yeah yes the german i, I don't think in this world no no one no country who who, who is better than german they have, <laughs> they have they have a very nice heart the germans yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no I, I, I i'll tell you the truth yes yeah yeah Yes. So I, I will say that I've been in Berlin for like five years. And in some ways that corresponds for me too. Like they, you know, a little bit, you know, they just want to watch you first and then check out who you are. And then like a, a warmth slowly comes. But I, I also feel that like that warmth is different. You know, Katerina experiences that in a different way. Um, and maybe, you know, because we all come from different places, but like, like so that is your that is your experience so now can we can we hear like katarina who has a very different look on her face right now can we hear what katarina says in response um and i don't want to create any further attention i know i know i just want to explore it, so. <laughs> it's uh germany i think germany is a really special country and the uh, germans are special and really yes my father is not wrong they are kind people. It's not that you say they are hateful people, but um, it's something they are really, how can I say that they, they, they are really, they that make walls. <laughs> they just like no emotion, no, don't show too much emotion, don't show your mistake, don't. And um, I think they are too strong with themselves. And uh, they can't see how positive the world uh, after 50 years or longer after the Second World War now, how positive the world looks to Germany. Um, I think there are a lot of tension, a lot of, still a lot of pain because of the Second World War. And we are a multicultural society. It's time that we accept that. If you want it or not, it's just like that. It's Germany. Look at it's in the center of Europe. Everybody needs to pass this country. I don't know where you want to give me to pass it somehow. Um, we are multicultural and it's time that we accept this, I think. Yeah. 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 It's just like, yeah. yeah. And um, yes, we have racism and it's uh, getting more. But I hope you find the right mechanisms to um, to lower this uh, kind of development. What is going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. me too. Absolutely, I, I pray for it for you know yeah. for you and for Germany and for the world. You know, like yes. we need to move on now. Yes. Um, uh, and I know it's very easy for me to say that. You know, to just throw that out there. But I, but I, I, I really believe it. I know it. Um, we are all part of the world. We are all part of the, the, the solution. So exactly. for the one, we can say it. For the one, it's easier to say, but we are all part of it. If it's easier or, or easier, or let's say we are part yeah. of this progress. So yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's important to be part of the process, not just categorize yourself um, to, yeah, where is the importance? Sure, some people have the strong voices, have the right words, and uh, have more to say because of their experience, because they are not white. But um, just, I don't know if we should always start leveling everything. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. I know, I mean, it's so like, complicated. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, we need to like, the other people who are also part of the sport are the, the audience who are um, asking questions. So I'm gonna like, give them some space now and I'm going to try to pull it back a little bit harder as I find it at times. This question I think is maybe, well actually it's for all of you, but maybe Agnes should, should answer it since I have not um, spoken to Agnes in a while. Um, uh, how have you experienced the response to the film in Europe um, and Africa or as opposed to Africa where any other response is different or surprising to you? Uh, I have to say, well, the reactions in Europe the reactions in Germany, because we've only really shown it in Germany uh, so far, were very positive. Um, people really liked or liked the film. And um, we've 
actually really only heard positive feedback, I think. Um, I'm missing, well, the Encounters Festival is the first time that we're showing the film outside of Germany. So I'm like super eager and waiting to hear reactions from the South African audience. And I'm, I'm a little, I don't want to say nervous, but th there's a tension, you know, I'm really waiting to find out what people outside of Germany think. Within Germany, I think most of the feedback that we got was that uh, people said that they appreciated the fact that big issues came along with a certain lightness uh, in our film so that it feels light, but we address, you know, some of the very big questions. And that's one of the main things that people have said to me that I, that I really, you know, love to hear because of course that's what we're always trying to do when making a documentary. Now you're, you're muted, Peter. Sorry, I just say, uh, and, and your, your, your subjects do fit that process very well because they're both kind of light but serious at the same time. So yes. um, I just want to read a, this is not a question, but it's just a comment. Um, this film presented such a different perspective on the relationship between Europe and Africa than I had previously seen. Um, thank you for bringing up this film and expanding on the single, single narrative of colonialism and neocolonialism. Um, and then we have another question for, that is directed at Agnes. Uh, what was it like filming this father-daughter relationship? Um, and this is a nice question. And, and seeing how it transformed or was affected across the two locations. Oh, wow. Uh, interesting. Um, they, I mean, Katarina and King Banza are very, you know, easy together. Uh, so we had a fantastic time filming with the both of them. Um, but I also, you know, knew, and I sort of actually knew that before that Katarina doesn't, Katarina, I'm sorry, but I'm, I have, I think I have to say that. <laughs> she, uh, she's very polite around her father, you know, and sometimes when we were with her without her father, we heard different tones sometimes. Uh, so um, towards the end of our filming, I think that changed a little bit. So the, the conversation that they're having at the end of the film, where they almost fight, they still don't really fight, but they're trying to have a little debate um, because they simply don't agree on the thing that they talk about. I know for sure that that would not have happened before our uh, journey to Ghana. So the end of the film was the last, our last day of shooting. It, that actually was the end of filming. And I think it just had to come out, you know, towards the end after this whole long trip. Um, and in Ghana, I can't really say how the relationship would have felt different to us. Um, I don't, I don't really think that made uh, a lot of difference. Katarina told us when, while we were in Ghana, uh, that she saw her father in a different light a little bit. You know, Katarina, if I may say that, you know, for you, um, I remember you telling us how impressed you were with his, with the work that he does in Ghana. And that is something that, uh, that I observed that I think that it was a little bit of a re reality check for Katarina, right? I think, yeah, that's a way to put it. Yes. Uh, yes, you just said it right. Um, it's that I knew that my father is doing this, uh, building bridges and bringing the people water, but to see it and to see the people and to see the thankfulness in their eyes and how they celebrate him, this uh, was something completely different to Germany. Yeah, to see again, because I know it, but it was 10 years ago and to see everything what he's done in the last 10 years was really impressive, yes. I saw him with a different eyes, yes. Did that kind of create any kind of like, like empty pressure in terms of your own future? Like all the things you might 
have to be responsible for the rest. Sure, sure, because the people depend on that, what my father is doing. And when he can no longer do it, this, who is doing it? Who yeah. will be this part for the people? And this is something what is really what I'm thinking about a lot. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it also leads to like a, you know, a whole series of conversation around government in Africa and near colonialism and who pays for what and where are the resources, et cetera. Um, so, I mean, in a way, it doesn't seem you know, seem fair on you or your father or the community that 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 that, that is a situation, um, but it is a situation, and you can see that. Um, see how much um, what we are wasting here in Germany, what we're throwing away, and you see what's what the people need there. It's what we are throwing away here is something what's have worth there, and this isn't balanced. And that's why you're thinking, how can I bring this wealth? What also depends on Africa in Europe. How can I bring this a little bit to the right point to, yeah. so it, yeah. they can develop, it, develop something on their own. So yeah. when they have clean water, they're healthy, they can go to school, they can do a job. It's, it starts with water. It starts with clean water and the health from the people. And so they can go and farm and everything where it starts, go to school. And... Yeah. So I, I have a difficult question. Well, I don't know if it's a difficult question, but it would be for me. Um, so um, King Banza, you are going, it seems from the film that you are ultimately going to like move back to Ghana and, re and retire um, um, in the area. Um, and um, Katerina, you said you, you'd be keen to go back, but you didn't say if you'd like, would you be happy to go back and live in Ghana on a permanent basis? How would that feel? Uh, I didn't think about this. I was, yes, I was thinking about when I'm old to live there. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But now I have my home base here. Yeah, no, sure. I just renovated my uh, mother's house. We renovated together. And uh, yeah, but um, I think it would be, would be really nice and a big adventure. And um, the development there, the people are so motivated. It's not like here, they are, we have everything. We are, yeah, we are full. Yeah. We, we consume, we can consume what we want whenever we, we have Amazon and this and that, but the people there, they're improving and um, find solutions for more big problems and in an interesting way. And that what would make it interesting to work there. Yes, I think it would be interesting. Mm -hmm. And King Barnsley? Yeah. How and I'm going to ask you to put your mute, take your mute off. How would it respond? How would you feel about going back to you know going back to Ghana and living living with your AV with the AV people, and um, no longer being in Germany? Um, I mean, I'm sure you'd come back for a visit, but how would it feel to make that that move? Yeah, uh, I said I'll go back, but it's not easy now because now. Now, recently, I'm building two, two water holes now for, for a very, very poor people who don't have water to drink. Yeah. I have a nice picture of this, uh, what I'm doing now. Then I have a lot of people, I have a lot of poor people to help, you know. It's, it will be very, very difficult for me. It will be yeah. very, very difficult for me to live in Germany because Germany, if I need help, they are ready to help me immediately. Yeah. Because, because they know that if they give me the money, I will use everything to do what, what I need for my people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the German, they trust, they trust me. Yeah. Before, before German don't believe you, they, they, it takes time. But if they believe you, everything they'll give you. You get everything from them. That's why I told you that the German, they are the best people in this world. Yeah. <laughs> For me, yeah. Yes, yes. The best in this sure, world. I, I understand that all statements yeah. are relative in some yeah. ways. Um, yeah. 
So we, we have, um, of course, gone over time, and that is absolutely fine. But we need to start winding down soon. Um, I have one question from the audience from Liani Mastop, who um, asked, um, Agnes, did you face any challenges as a European woman telling the story? Mm, I'm sure I did. <laughs> um, I for myself, like for my own, the, my, the, you know, my own perception of myself and my work, I think it was challenging, not so much telling the Banza family story, but filming in Ghana um, because of the perspective thing. I was very much aware that I see Ghana and the people that we talk to and the people that we film with through my very white German eyes. Um, and I was always aware of that. And I was sometimes also nervous about it. And I was sometimes nervous about, will the film feel white? Will it feel like a white woman's film? Yeah. And I was, dealing with that a lot and sometimes struggling with it and um some you know sometimes answering the question uh you know by saying yes it will probably feel white and is that a bad thing necessarily like where is the you know about limitations and Certainly, you know, there is this thing called the white gaze that's, uh, you know, Toni Morrison, I think Toni Morrison, uh, uh, you know, came up with that word or, you know, made it famous. And I did not, I didn't, yeah, I, I was trying to stay neutral as much as I could, but of course we can never be neutral. Um, and I think my solution may be to that challenge was that I tried to, while we were in Ghana and traveling, I tried to see whatever we saw through Katarina's eyes, um, which is something that we, you, we do when we're making documentaries all the time. But in that case, it felt a little comforting. It gave me some sort of you know reassurance because I knew that I'm just, showing what she is seeing and what she is going through and we're very close to her so I think that was my way of dealing with that challenge um, but it's interesting and I'm I'm thinking about it a lot also for my future as a filmmaker because I hope that this was not the last film that I'm uh, sh you know shooting in an African country or African culture and I think um, that next time I would try to uh, have someone on my team who is not a white filmmaker. <laughs> I would love to start some sort of collaboration just to, you know, include multiple perspectives. Yeah. I had Katarina's and King Banza's perspective, but I would love to have a different perspective also on the side of the team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, more, 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 more perspectives are, you know, always enrich things. Um, of course, I'd yeah. I mean, you, you just, you, um, I mean, this is whole, another whole conversation, but, um, you know, you spoke, you spoke about uh, trying to see the world through Katarina's eyes. And, you know, and I like, I appreciate that, you know, I appreciate that um, sentiment. Um, a lot of people in the current discourse kind of say that's something you can't do. Um, mm -hmm. And I agree that maybe you can't do it, but I do think that you can try to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's always just a tendency. You cannot fully do it because you're still always yourself. And I'm not claiming that I could ever see it through somebody else's eyes, but trying to be close to her, I think, um, helped to try to, you know, you know, yeah, uh, be close to her feelings and her experiences, you know, like I said, which is something that we always do when making a documentary to be as close as possible to the protagonists and try yeah. to, you know, see things through their eyes, no matter what ethnic background or, you know, yeah. yeah. Katarina, can, can, can you respond um, just about the notion of somebody else seeing the world through your eyes? 
it for me was really interesting what Agnes Lisa said because um, I was thinking about this um, a while ago, um, how she was feeling about to be a white woman, to tell our story. And uh, in our society, she, we both are the complete opposite. And um, for me, I don't have a problem when she says something like this because um, I trusted her 100% from the beginning on. I couldn't lay this story in somebody else's hand to know um, she will take good care of this story. That's why we was in a really um, close relationship in this time. We talked a lot. And um, so for me, it's not a problem when she says something like this because we was close and yeah. possibly she, Maybe it was like this that she had the feeling and, and or wanted to communicate um, the pictures the other stories through my eyes to so she can feel it for herself in a in a in a I don't know what you do it in when you're on the back of the film, but to your emotions and yeah, I don't <laughs> sorry, I lost the words uh, the, the English words. Uh, sorry, Agnes. Um, no, I think um, it's totally okay for me, totally okay. I'm but can I just add something? I just want to add that I don't want it to sound like I was using Katarina or anybody else uh, to have a certain experience. Uh, that's not the way that I, I, I hope it didn't come across like that. You know, when you make a documentary about a person, you always try to get as close to the person as possible because you're telling their story. So the closer I am, uh, in the work process uh, with the camera and everything, the better the audience can understand the feelings and thoughts and concerns of um, the protagonist. So that's, you know, that's, that's, that's the process that we're always going through. It's not, I don't think, you know, I don't want it to sound like I was using Katarina to be able to feel something that a, a woman that's not white would feel that that's yeah that would be wrong somebody also just said this is i think this is also very much a european story as well that perspective added complexity to the story that it wasn't rooted in a single background or location um so um just um in the last few minutes um I just want to ask for me what is what is a very important question, but you know it's a question that I ask um, often in screenings about Africa, and I know in this particular uh, in films about Africa, but in this particular case, it's complicated by well by Corona by Corona and COVID and travel restrictions. Uh, but are there plans to show the film um, in the local community? Yes, there are, but they're sketchy. I mean, there's the the absolute desire to screen it in in the local communities. I we just talked about it a few days ago, King Banza and I and his wife Gabriele Banza. We just had a conversation a few days ago about my absolute wish to go back to Hohwe in Ghana, where we shot most of the film, and I would also love uh, to screen it in Accra. Um, but of course, it's really hard to plan something at this point, but we were yeah. saying that we don't have to rush it, uh, you know, either in the fall, if it happens in, in the spring next year, that would be marvelous as well. So, yes, I definitely want to go back and show, especially those that are in the film, most of them have not seen the film. Uh, that's, you know, not something that I'm happy about. So, yes, we will definitely go to Ghana and show the film there. Okay, great. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think one thing that Corona has done is it's changed the nature of time and deadlines mm -hmm. and things, um, which I think is good for media and culture, ultimately. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of need to end things off. I want to uh, ask um, King Banza, um, what if there's one thing that you would like audiences to take away from this film, um, if there's one thing that is very important to you about this film, um, or just anything, actually, what would you like to say to people? Agnes have done uh, uh, this film. It's not, uh, it's not easy, yeah, because we have 
about uh, nine, uh, we have about 90 minutes, 90 hour of films. Yeah. And she has to cut it and uh, with, uh, uh, she, she used her, her own philosophy. You know, the film, uh, this film is a uh, philosophy films. Yeah, philosophy, yeah. Yeah, I, I speak French and uh, yeah, English together, you know. <laughs> it's a philosophy. <laughs> yes, this film is a philosophy film. Yeah, that's the only I can tell you. Yeah. King Bansa? So, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, I think you were done. So, uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm now, I'm now going to say goodbye to us all, but if we, can, if we can just stay online for a little while afterwards. But King Banza, Katerina, Agnes, thank you so much for this conversation. It's been wonderful. Um, I'm sorry we have to end it. I think we could carry on talking for quite a while. Uh, but thank you, everybody. Uh, very nice. Thank you. To do something with you. Very nice. Thank you very, very much. much. Yeah. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.